The idea of soil quality has been around for a long time. Tillage operations began years ago to help fight off weeds and help crops grow without competition. But now with the development of chemical products to do those things for you, Oklahoma State University researchers like Jason Warren believe no-till is the way to go when it comes to improving soil quality. The concept of soil quality is that the soil functions not simply to grow crops, but the soil also provides functions for water purification, um, water flow regulation, and general environmental quality. Because if we have eroded soils, then we have water quality issues. If we have wind erosion, we have air quality issues. And then um, no-till will actually, um, because of this, the accumulation of soil structure and improvement soil structure, you'll get rapid infiltration out here. Whereas in a tilled field, it'll crest over and then you'll get runoff. And um, of course, anywhere, that will cause flooding and then um, just a general um, reduction in the function of the soil. To show us just how much of an effect no-till can have on your soil, Jason drilled out a core in a no-till field. So what we have at the surface, which is critically important, is we have a lot of nice structure that's developed with, with uh, root growth and we have uh, root um, channels and things like that that will be developed in this no-till ground. And you see how it breaks off in nice large regularly shaped or irregularly shaped crumbles like uh, cookie crumbs. Yeah. That's what we call nice surface soil structure. And we found that nice soil structure went all the way down to the bottom of the core. Next, we went out to the field to check out what kind of residue you can expect to see in a no-till operation. Well, this is a really nice example of uh, a no-till field with very good accumulation of crop residue. Um, residue is by far a very, one of the most critical components of no-till soil quality because it's protecting that soil surface from the uh, impacts of rainfall. Um, a lot of people think that the flow of water down a slope is actually the erosive force, but it's the actual impact of that raindrop hitting the soil surface that is the most powerful part of that rainstorm. You get this surface residue. I mean, you look down, can you see bare ground here? Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's the beauty of no-till. Um, so it's protecting the soil from erosion. It's protecting the soil from crusting. So you have quite a bit of layer here before you even yeah you the have slope. you have a lot of layer and one thing to notice is 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 we've got wheat straw here we've got uh, soybean residue here um, and then we've got even corn stalks coming out these this corn uh, would have been grown in the summer of 08 wow. is how long that's been here and and that's really nice and what this residue also does in in addition to protecting the soil surface is it provides um, essentially food for biological activity and burrowing insects, worms, and things of that nature that are also important with respect to improving soil quality. We wanted to get a closer look, so we dug a hole to check out the surface soil. But again, you can see all the, the darkness. You can actually, if you look real close, you can see worm casts right there at the very surface. Um, I don't know if your camera can pick that up, but this is a lot easier to look at the surface of the soil when we dig it up. If you dig it, like there's a wormhole, water is going to be able to move from the surface um, just like it uh, very rapidly down that wormhole to get to the subsoil and, and moisten that subsoil. And again, you're just seeing that beautiful cookie crumb. It's just breaking apart like that. Just yeah. beautiful soil. Now, how long before we actually see the soil look like this? I mean, people who are doing no-till for the first time, this isn't going to look like this right away, correct? No. How long is that process? What we, you start to see some of these features come on um, in maybe three years or so. Okay. Um, the critical, you know, the first year, in fact, and we, we should really go to a cultivated piece of land so you can see what a surface crust looked like. That's the first thing you want to get rid of, and it's a very easy thing to get rid of. And that's something you can get rid of right away. 
Well, or you have to through maintenance of crop residue. If you've got crop residue on your field, then you're not going to have surface crusting. Um, now, anywhere there's no residue, yes, it's going to crust. Mm -hmm. But if you've got a nice, good um, blanket of crop residue, then that crusting is going to be minimal. To get a better idea of just what Jason was talking about, we went to visit a cultivated field. So you're going to show us the difference between this field and what it's like to be in the no-till field. Yeah, and, and so, of course, the very obvious uh, observation is there's no residue here because right. uh, we've turned that in. Mm -hmm. That's the function of, one of the functions of cultivation is to turn that residue in. Yeah, you can see lots of bare ground here. Uh, get it decomposed. Yeah, you'll see a lot of bare ground. Mm -hmm. And what you'll see uh, is that surface crusting I'm talking about. In fact, it's probably easier if I just get a uh, shovel full. You can see how that, that surface breaks apart this, this loose moist soil at the underneath and then you've got this crust at the surface. That's going to impede water movement because right. what happens again is the, the raindrop hits the soil, the soil particles move around and fill in all the pores in the surface and then that, that um, initiates runoff. Um, so this one doesn't really break apart like the other one. Not quite the same. Not quite the same. Um, um, what yeah. you'll see is a lot of just single, very small aggregates. Mm -hmm. um, it, of course, tends to be a little drier, so that's part of it. But a lot of it is there's just not any structure. It's what we call just massive structure. Because uh, tillage and cultivation, you know, it breaks down all those aggregates and, and essentially decomposes them. And it'll function. Um, directly after cultivation, that's one of the reasons why we cultivate is to loosen the soil, to allow the plants to to uh, grow. Um, but that cultivation then allows for erosion, um, both wind and water erosion. It also allows for that surface crusting to occur, um, which is going to impede water infiltration, increasing runoff, increasing erosion but then also limiting the amount of water we're getting into the soil for crop production because we are in a water limiting environment and so we want as much water in the soil as possible and, and cultivation through its influence on the surface actually can limit over the long term the amount of water we're getting into the ground. All right. Thank you so much for bringing us out here today.